Four men, four psychopaths. Mr. Brown, Mr. Pink, Mr. White, and Mr. Blonde. Four criminals, each dangerous in his own way. It pays to know what kind of dangerous each one of these men is, how they think, and what makes them tick. Mr. Brown. He's a nobody and most likely has always been a nobody. He was probably the kind of kid who got beaten up when he wasn't being ignored. He would have had a poor relationship with his father, the kind of father who would take out his aggression on him if he dared get near him. If he wasn't within hitting range, his father would be sure to rain down insults on him. His mother was likely very ineffectual. She would have suffered abuse from the father and been able to do little to protect her son. Mr. Brown would hate his mother for failing him, and this is one of the reasons Mr. Brown disrespects women. As a child, Mr. Brown might have sought the attention of older boys to fill the empty hole left by his useless father. He would have followed them into juvenile crime, happy to be in their company, even if it meant being a gopher and a source of amusement to them. In the course of that path, he became a pathological liar and an opportunist. He wouldn't have done well in high school and probably failed out or barely graduated. Most likely, Mr. Brown has a juvenile record of crap crimes, stuff he did for and with his criminal buddies, shoplifting, vandalism, selling dope, and breaking into cars. Mr. Brown isn't a tough guy in the least, but that doesn't stop him from bragging about his supposed bravado. He likes people to think he's tough and he gets a high off of telling a good but phony story. Most likely, the people around him know he's full of shit, but so are they, so they just shrug it off or have a good laugh at his fanciful concoctions. Mr. Brown is the lowest man on the totem pole in the game. He is not one that people will trust with inside secrets or plans. Rather, he is hired to do the simplest job, wait outside in the car until the job is done and be ready to drive. Mr. Pink. Mr. Pink has a severe inferiority complex that makes him the arrogant man he is today. Probably grew up poor. He would have been picked on for his small size, lack of handsomeness, and poor circumstances. He has some insight into African-American culture, which means he probably grew up a poor white in an ethnically mixed neighborhood. Mr. Pink is an intelligent man, though. He likely finished high school because he is a quick learner, and he's probably a very capable student. However, even though he would have had the ability to go to college, Mr. Pink would not have had the temperament, funding, or encouragement to go. Mr. Pink no doubt entered a life of crime because he needed the money and he liked the independence. He most likely has never had legal employment since the day he went criminal. Mr. Pink does not have any qualms about committing crimes because he feels no obligation to society he labels as corrupt and unfair. In the true mindset of a psychopath, he believes he is the only one entitled to anything. He will only give something to get something, and he isn't into charity work. Mr. Pink may have started in the crime by picking pockets and then moved up in short order to small armed robberies, and finally into more complicated heists after analyzing the risk to reward ratio of his activities. Mr. Pink no doubt is a pretty good criminal, but he is prone to flashes of anger at times and has been known to trash a room or two. However, most of the time he is good at handling problems as they arise. Mr. Pink believes he has a strong personal ethic and his own code of conduct. He believes in acting like a professional, doing the job well, and honoring one's commitment. While bosses don't like Mr. Pink personally, he is one to trust to get the job done and do it as well as possible. He is smarter than most criminals, but he will never be a leader because he lacks people skills. For Mr. White, we have some hard information in addition to our profile. We know that his real name is Lawrence Dimmick, and his origins are from the Milwaukee, Wisconsin area. It's important to realize that Mr. White isn't as nice as he pretends to be. In fact, he's a cold-blooded psychopath. What you may see as empathy for another human being is nothing but an expression of his own needs. He probably grew up in a rough neighborhood, possibly in foster care homes after the divorce of his parents. It's likely that he quickly learned the way to survive is not only lie and steal, but to do it with a smile. The empathy he shows may be a methodology he learned to control others when he was still a youth. Mr. White seems to have received an education of some substance. Perhaps he spent some time in parochial schools where he got just the right mix of discipline and religion to make him cocky and self-righteous. He may have actually finished high school or left to join the military at age 17 because he has a very strong, almost fatherly side to him in which he behaves as a sergeant might with his men. He's also very skilled with weapons, which means he may have worked in some fighting capacity. Mr. White has a grandiose view of himself. Whatever he does is correct, and what everyone else does is wrong. 
He is a good manipulator, and because he has learned the art of congeniality, people generally like him. Women like him. And he likes that they like him, because then he can stay in control. It's important to remember, he sees people only as pawns in his own personal game of power and control. Mr. Blonde. We know that Mr. Blonde's real name is Victor Vega. He is the ultimate level of psychopath out there. Zero feeling, zero remorse, and zero responsibility for his actions. He lives in his own private world and he makes all his own rules. Then he goes out and plays his game totally without regard to anyone else's needs or plans. Everyone to him is either useful or in the way. Mr. Blonde likely had more advantages growing up than most criminals. His family would look like any middle class family with a mom and a dad and plenty to eat. His father would have been a strict disciplinarian and hard to please. His mother, on the other hand, was a soft touch. She spoiled him and protected him from his father and thought he could do no wrong. He was undoubtedly a beautiful baby and a smart little boy, but he quickly developed into a narcissist who believed the world should revolve around him. Early on, he became a compulsive liar and a violent little monster, a child no one but his mother could stand. He is just a shell of a human with absolutely no depth to him. In order to manipulate and interact with others, he would have eventually learned how to act like other people, at least creating a good enough imitation of a normal person not to immediately set off warning bells. Mr. Blonde is a sadistic psychopath and likely a sexual psychopath as well. Rape and deviant sex acts are enjoyable ways for violent, sadistic psychopaths to torture someone. He's confident and skillful in his methods of eliciting pain and torture. It's probably a talent that he's honed to an art form after successive victims. It's also interesting to note that Mr. Blonde has a totally flat effect. Almost nothing upsets him. In fact, he finds almost everything amusing. A chink in his armor is to make him realize that he's not the one in control. Mr. Blonde is a poster boy for psychopathic personalities.